This is the Space Shuttle and it's pure fantasy. Top speed supposedly 17,500 mile an hour. Top temperature 3,000 degrees Fahrenheit. <coughs> oh yes. Supposedly every conspiracy theorist's favorite word. But sadly, Leo, not applicable on this occasion. There was nothing supposed about the Space Shuttle program. And just to clarify the point, which Space Shuttle are we talking about? Was it Enterprise, Columbia, Challenger, Discovery or Atlantis? Please subscribe. Here's the SR-71. This is reality. Top speed, 2,200 miles an hour. Top temperature, 900 degrees Fahrenheit. So, as we've all come to expect from Leo, we are comparing apples to oranges again. Granted, both the apple and the orange are capable of flight in this instance, but any comparison made between the Space Shuttle and the SR-71 are completely irrelevant. They were both designed to do very different things. 17,500 miles an hour. 2,200 miles an hour. Ridiculous, isn't it? Hmm. Now, for once, I'll actually agree with you. It is ridiculous. It's ridiculous to compare them. They are not intended to be used for the same purpose. You're just doing what we see conspiracy theorists doing all the time. Now, I haven't watched this video all the way through yet, but I would be willing to bet that somehow in the world of conspiracy theorists, the SR-71 is somehow gonna demonstrate that space is fake and that the shuttle missions never happened. 3,000 degrees Fahrenheit. 900 degrees Fahrenheit. You can say numbers. Well done. You do understand that one of these vehicles leaves Earth's atmosphere and the other one doesn't, which in its simplest terms explains why the shuttle needs to be able to withstand much higher temperatures than the SR-71. One is clearly reality and has been verified many times. The other is just pure fantasy. This is just a plane that comes into land. Right, so we'll get to what the Space Shuttle was or is in just a second, but why has the SR-71 been verified many times and the Space Shuttle hasn't? Is there any chance that for once you're going to actually do what you say you're going to do? and explain what you mean? Or is this just going to be another standard level Earth Observer video where you just say, oh dear, and pantomime over and over again and forget to explain the why? And the why in this case is why the shuttle hasn't been verified. And by verified, I'm going to take a wild shot in the dark and say that when you say verified, what you actually mean is seen. It's not any spacecraft coming from an orbit around a ball. Ah, right, now I get it. The space shuttle hasn't been verified because it's been into space, which you think is fake. Now, in a perfect world, that would be the end of this video, because if that's what you're saying, then we all already know how completely ridiculous it is to say that. But I don't want to be accused of putting words in your mouth, so Leo, over to you, pal. Its design looks more like a Lego aeroplane than some badass spacecraft. And then when you compare it to reality, and of course the speeds and the temperatures, like I said, it looks like a Lego fucking aeroplane rather than some badass spacecraft. The design and development of NASA's space shuttle program began in the late 1960s and continued through the 1970s. Now the initial concept for a reusable spacecraft that could carry astronauts and cargo to space and return to Earth like an aeroplane was proposed in the early 1960s as part of NASA's plan for human space exploration. So based on that alone, you would expect the Space Shuttle to look dated by today's standards. I really can't understand where you think you're going with this. Now, whenever the Space Shuttle landed, it was always accompanied by jets, supposed chase planes to help it land because the guys in the Space Shuttles were wearing space suits. Well, yes and no, and there's that bloody word again, supposed. No, it's not supposed, Leo. More often than not, the space shuttle was followed by a chase plane when it was landing. But that was because during the landing, the shuttle had limited visibility from the cockpit.
but it had limited visibility because of its design and the positioning of the pilot during landings. So the chase plane acted as a visual aid as well as being a safety monitor and acting as emergency support and a few other things that I can't remember right now off the top of my head. But the plane was there for a good reason. So the chase plane was helping the guys land. Or so that's the official explanation for the chase planes. <laughs> I love it when people like Leo do that. So you have found out the actual reason for the chase plane, and I imagine that you're now gonna give us the conspiracy theorist version of why there was a chase plane. And I for one can't wait to hear it. And that would be fine if it wasn't for the U-2 spy plane, as we're about to see. Uh, say what now? Where does the U-2 spy plane come into this? I thought we were looking at the space shuttle and the SR-71. Now, as we know, the pilots of the U-2 spy plane wear spacesuits reaching high altitude. And when they land because they're wearing the spacesuits, same as the shuttle guys, they've got poor visibility. But they use a, sh uh, a chase car, which of course, as you can see, is below the plane. Right, hang on a sec, and, and I still can't see how this is relevant to anyone who isn't a conspiracy theorist. And I hate to be the one to point out the obvious, but you're doing it again. The U-2 spy plane isn't the space shuttle either. And has a brilliant view and can talk the pilot down easily because he has a better view because he's below it. Now then, there are a variety of factors that explain why the U-2 spy plane uses a chase car and not a chase plane, but it would make this a very long-winded explanation that I don't want to do, mainly because I hate U-2, especially that boner guy. He's weird. But the use of a chase car instead of a chase plane for the U-2 spy plane is due to factors such as the U-2's high altitude and speed capabilities, unique landing gear design, ground operation requirements, cost, logistical considerations, and safety, which make a chase car a practical and effective choice for supporting U-2 operations during takeoff and landing. Now, I would have potentially believed the official narrative regarding the chase plane in the space shuttle if it wasn't for the U-2 plane. Well, isn't that a silly thing to say? And I dread to think what your explanation is going to be, but if I've learned anything in my time on YouTube, it's that you can take the silliest explanation in the world and a conspiracy theorist like Level Earth Observer will always find a way to make it sillier. So go ahead, Leo, do your worst or best. I can never tell when it comes to these bozos. The U2 plane and the chase car being underneath and having the best view possible highlights the absurdity of the space shuttle having a chase plane. You should have had a chase car. But it didn't, did it? I can't see how this makes any difference to you and your beliefs. And as far as I can tell, all you're doing is grasping at straws again, which is funny because, talk about a straw man argument, in its simplest terms, the chase plane was better suited to guide the space shuttle in. It's really that simple. And I'm sorry if that spoils your fun, but it is what it is. You can have a chase car because then you're either jet engines because it's a plane that comes into land, a jet plane, not a space glider. But the space shuttle had its own engines, known as the orbital maneuvering system, which were used for various purposes during the shuttle's missions, including maneuvering around in space and for re-entry and landing. But during the final approach and landing, the shuttle relied on its aerodynamic surfaces, such as the wings and the tail, to control and maneuver. Now, the OMS engines were not used during this phase as the shuttle was gliding and didn't require additional propulsion. So you don't hear its engines come in. Like I say, it's a plane that flies in from an undisclosed location. They come in, turn the engine off just before they land, and they land. Their cover is, of course, the plane, the chase plane. But where they come unstuck is the U-2 plane has the same hindrance, the Spain suit for the pilot. He uses a chase car, which gives him better view. Now look, I want to tell you a secret. I've decided that I'm going to try my best not to call conspiracy theorists stupid. But Leo, you're making it really, really difficult for me. So I'll pass this one over to you lot, and you can leave a comment below letting me know what you think. Who explained the need for a chase plane in a more plausible way? Level Earth Observer 
or little old me. And FYI, it doesn't come from an undisclosed location. It came from space. Because whether you choose to believe that space is real or not, Leo, that's where the space shuttle was used to go when it was operational. Today I'm going to be looking at some of the claims made regarding the Challenger 86 disaster. Ah, right. Now remember I just said that I was trying not to call conspiracy theorists stupid? Well, that may be about to change. The Challenger disaster occurred on the 28th of January in 1986, when the Space Shuttle Challenger broke apart shortly after its launch, due to a failure of the O-rings in the solid rocket boosters, and all seven crew members on board died. Now the disaster led to a thorough investigation resulting in changes to the shuttle program and NASA safety protocols and it serves as a reminder of the risks of space exploration and has had a lasting impact on NASA's operations and safety culture and I can pretty much guarantee that none of what Leo is about to say is true in any way shape or form. That is some of the astronauts supposedly still alive to this day and that they weren't on the actual space shuttle that blew up and that they're living day-to-day -day lives doing normal jobs well 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 for once his use of the word supposedly may be justified here because this load of old steamy shite has been debunked so many times by so many different people and the one thing that really bothers me about this insane conspiracy theory is the families of the astronauts that were lost on that day. They've probably heard these very silly people say things that Leo is about to say. Can you imagine how it makes them feel? Or more appropriately, do you even care about how it makes them feel? And one of the characters is a lady called Judith Resnick. We've got the Judith Resnick NASA astronaut here on our screen. And there's some claims made that Yale professor Judith Resnick is the very same person. Judith A. Resnick was an engineer and the second American woman to travel to space, or at least she would have been. She was responsible for operating the shuttle's robotic arm and performing other tasks on the mission, and she was also a daughter, a sister, to the family members that she left behind. And these silly conspiracy types expect people to believe that NASA faked, for no apparent reason, the deaths of seven astronauts on live TV in a catastrophic shuttle accident, then allowed those astronauts to openly live out the rest of their lives back home without even taking the basic steps of disguising their physical appearances and real names. And nobody noticed it until nearly 30 years later. I'm not going to make any claims myself. I'm just going to look at some photography, the evidence, and listen to two clips and compare the voices. Well, nothing shocking there then. So essentially what you're going to do is exactly the same as you do in every other video you produce. You're going to watch a clip from another conspiracy theorist and respond by saying, Dear, oh dear, pantomime. Now this is a fairly recent image of Judith Resnick, Yale professor. And here's a compilation where I blended the astronaut with the Yale professor. Sorry everyone, but you can't say I didn't try my best. And as a wise man once told me, it's better to try and fail than to have never tried at all. Leo, old buddy old pal, if you think that's the same person, then you're an even bigger idiot than I've always thought you are. Now admittedly, I'm no expert when it comes to these things, but I do have eyes. And apart from the fact that these are both women with dark hair, I can't see any other similarity. Hang on a sec, and I can see the confusion. I thought I should mention that they both also have two eyes, a nose, and a mouth. What an absolute prick. So let's just have a look as these two images are blended together. Obviously there's a good couple of, well, it's probably over 20 years time difference between the two images. But there is a definite similarity there. But if it was the same person, they wouldn't look similar, would they? They'd look the same! just older in the second photograph that you so skillfully blended together. I thought you hated CGI. The nose being one of them. And the features as well, quite similar. Eyebrows slightly different. 
Again, I'm not making any claims other than noting that they do look quite similar. Of course, there is an age gap between the two images. But yeah. Again, come to your own conclusions there. I already have. And my conclusion is that you and any other conspiracy theorists that make this claim is a complete idiot. Like I just said, they both dark haired women and they're both dark haired women and as far as I can see, that's where it ends. Being similar is not the same as being the same, is it? Anyway, that's enough of that nonsense. He just spends the rest of the video comparing two different photographs of two completely different women. Thanks to Fred Snow, Douchebag8008 and Martin Ubani for hitting the super thanks button on the last video. You're awesome. If you want to support what I do, then all the ways you can do so are listed down below. There's Patreon, PayPal, channel memberships, my Amazon wish list, whatever you want to do. Or you can just do me a little favor and hit the like button. Now, one last thing before I say toodle pip. If you follow me on Twitter, you will have seen that I've been having some computer issues this week. And it turns out that it's my fault again. I know, but it's because I'm cheap. Anyway, why am I telling you this? Well, I've got some PC components arriving tomorrow which should fix the issue i've had to buy a new graphics card because my computer guy says that's what's wrong it would have to be the most expensive thing wouldn't it so if it all goes well i'll see you again on friday for another video but if i don't appear in your recommended viewing pleasures on youtube on friday it means i've completely broken my pc again and based on previous experience there's even a possibility you'll never see me again anyway thanks very much again for watching everybody love you bye all right all right watch this next but before you do make sure you subscribe by order of the creaky blinder.